is Channel 2 News at Noon. Good afternoon for hundreds of Chinese refugees desperate for a new life. This is the day after their hopes were shattered when around the world odyssey came to a tragic end. And now the Chinese immigrants whose overcrowded dirty freighter ran aground in the Rockaways this weekend are awaiting word about their fate. And so are the crew members who headed up the journey. We have team coverage today of this story beginning with John Slattery in Chinatown. John, where are the survivors now? Well, they're uh, on their way to Pennsylvania and to other holding pens uh, where they will be kept for immigration hearings. But officials believe that this is the area where these people hope to be coming, to Chinatown and to other Asian communities in the greater New York area. It's where it's believed they intended to come to work off the enormous passage they had to pay. The freighter, freed from the sandbar, was this morning docked in Bayonne, New Jersey. Some 250 Chinese who survived, those not hospitalized, were today loaded onto buses to be taken to jails in Pennsylvania, where they will be detained for about four months while they are processed and await hearings before the Immigration and Naturalization Service. Young people who paid dearly to get here. They're paying $30,000 apiece to get here. Uh, to put it in perspective, in 1990, Chinese represented about 2% of all the inadmissibles we encountered at Kennedy Airport. And today, they're up to 22%. So it's a major increase in Chinese traffic. Officials say that since 1991, 24 freighters with Chinese have been intercepted in American waters, carrying Chinese nationals, most of whom could not afford to pay the exorbitant passage themselves. So it takes them years to pay off whoever puts up the money, oftentimes Chinese gangs. Immigration authorities say the boat people agree to take jobs in Chinese restaurants in New York City and New Jersey as a way to work off what they owe. Business leaders in Chinatown say it's the same as 100 years ago. In the same sense that the Chinese American pioneers in the early days came through boat too. And they of course also couldn't afford to pay the passageway. Someone paid for them and they came and repaid them through working. And it's the concept called indenture servant. The problem for such indentured servants is they must also pay their day-to-day -day living expenses, so they're indebted for years with no way out. Are they better off here than they were in coastal China? Here, despite being exploited and the risk of being illegal, some think it's better. They seek asylum here, trying to escape forced sterilization at home after one child. And they're saying that they're afraid to return to China because they're going to be sterilized. They want more than one child. Now, one of the crucial questions here is what happens to the captain and the crew of the freighter? They happen to be in Brooklyn right now at federal court, and so is Channel 2's Chris Morgan. Chris? Well, Mr. Slattery, as of this moment, everything is on hold here at federal court because they are still waiting for a number of translators to come forth. Remember the crew, 12 members of the crew, plus the captain, come from different parts of Far East. Indonesia, uh, they speak Indonesian dialects, they speak Cantonese, they speak Fukanese, they may even speak New Mandarin. But that's only one part of the problem. The big problem is the, the charges. And what charges will there be? Well, the first charge we know of will be that of smuggling of human beings. And immediately after that, you have the question as to whether or not there will be murder charges placed against them. And that'll be a question to be answered by the Queen's District Attorney, Mr. Richard Brown. If a murder charge is to be placed, it in all probability will be that of uh, well, human indifference to life, in effect, is the bottom line. And with that in tow, the federal district attorney here is probably conferring with Richard Brown as of this moment as to what charges might be brought against him in the end. So we're here in Brooklyn, on hold, waiting for all of these little kinks to be worked out so that they will come before the magistrate, Magistrate Marilyn Go, here in federal court. That will happen sometime late this afternoon. Live in Brooklyn, I'm Chris Borgen. Back to you in studio. All right, Chris, thanks. Lots still to develop on this story, and we'll have it later. Well, Woody Allen's long and bitter child custody fight with Mia Farrow is now over. A judge today awarded custody of the three children to Mia Farrow. Allen is now barred from visiting his seven-year-old daughter, Dylan, for at least six months. Farrow had accused Allen of molesting Dylan. The judge granted Allen supervised visitation with the couple's five-year-old biological son, Satchel. However, Woody Allen cannot visit his adopted son, 15-year-old Moses, unless Moses requests it. A New Jersey man is under arrest this noon. The latest suspect charged with killing a pedestrian 
while driving with a suspended license. Police say 35-year-old Anthony Dunkley of Plainfield was driving a rental car in Upper Manhattan when he struck and killed 52-year-old Jose Arroyo last night. Police say Dunkley's license was not only suspended in New Jersey, but had been suspended six times before in New York State. It has been a solemn morning for the family, friends, and colleagues of police officer killed at a Newark, New Jersey courthouse last week. <coughs> Hundreds of officers from all around the country joined the family of Officer John Sarek at funeral services in Nutley, New Jersey. Sarek was about to testify in a trial last Thursday when he was shot outside an Essex County courtroom. The accused gunman is a relative of one of the men on trial. A Bronx neighborhood is fighting crime in a way that's never been tried before. Residents of the Cretona section are joining the NAACP. It will be the first non-black chapter of the famous civil rights organization. The Hispanic residents say they hope the high-profile pro group will draw more attention to the crime that plagues their area because they say politicians have ignored their cries for help. Well, at least the politicians have money on their minds today, some of them. Mayor Dinkins and the New York City Council are working toward a midnight budget deadline tonight. The two sides are said to be still at least $70 million apart. The City Council wants to cut a total of $300 million from the mayor's $31 billion proposal for the year 1994. Some possible victims of the budget acts are the Department of Cultural Affairs and a new department for the homeless. Still on the subject of politics, New York Senator Al D'Amato may soon be aiming for Albany instead of Washington. D'Amato says he's thinking about running for governor and challenging Mario Cuomo in 1994. D'Amato won re-election to a third Senate term last fall. At the time, he said he would not run for public office again. The candidates for New Jersey's governor are gearing up for the big showdown tomorrow, the Republican primary race. It's a close one between the two top contenders, Christy Whitman and Carrie Edwards, although the most recent poll by the Asbury Park Press gives Edwards slightly better odds of beating incumbent Jim Florio. Florio, by the way, is running unopposed on the Democratic ticket. Religious groups will now be allowed to use New York public school grounds after hours. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court knocked down a state policy that excluded religious activities on school property. The court ruled that if non-religious groups are given access, religious groups must be given the same right. The justices said that equal access does not violate the required separation of church and state. We have a lot more news still to come for you on this Monday, the seventh day of June. Tony night, tears of joy and of disappointment. It was a big night. Yes, it was. Broadway's one and only Dennis Cunningham will fill us in on the gala night. And then coming up, the piece of history that couldn't match the forces of nature. Channel 2 News, sponsored by Sanka. It's a little thing. When I have my morning coffee, I like to spread my newspaper out. And for 32 years on the 710 Express, this was impossible. You have to fold it 19 times so you don't cross that invisible line into the other guy's seat. It's nice to have the time to appreciate the smooth, rich taste of Sanka coffee. And my coffee tastes even better without the paper cup. Sanka, everything you love about coffee. Blindfold, monsieur? No. Cigarette? No. What do you want on your tombstone? Pepperoni and sausage. Tombstone pizza, Pierre! New Tombstone Original Pizza. Its spirited, zesty sauce gives it that in-your-face tombstone taste. What do you want on your tombstone? Napkin? No. Victoria had a cute pet monkey, and she loved it like it was her own child. In fact, she says she gave it so much attention that her boyfriend started getting jealous. Then police say he got resentful. We put on a witness who saw scratch marks and bite marks on the defendant's hand. Her monkey was murdered. Her boyfriend went to trial, and everyone's still wondering what happened. Monkey on his back on the next hard copy. Tonight at 7 on Channel 2. These are my safari pictures. Oh. When you develop your film at CVS, you'll get either a free second set of jumbo prints or a free roll of film. <gasps> I got the double prints for you. Oh. We wanted the film. Yeah, we, we wanted, wanted the film. film. <laughs> at 
CVS, you'll find hundreds of CVS brand items guaranteed to perform as well as the more expensive national brands, which could add up to endless savings. Why pay more? CVS. Welcome to Elsie's Market. Uh-oh, here's a hungry herd of kids. Okay, who wants a sandwich? Yeah. The kids love Borden Singles. They stay so fresh because they're the only singles in the reclosable Singles Keeper. And so delicious because they're made with the same dairy goodness as pure, fresh Borden milk. Mm, wow! Happens every time. No wonder Borden is the only brand we cows endorse. Elmer, no seconds. If it's Borden, it's got to be good. This Monday noon, the winners are still basking in the afterglow of the Tony Awards. Broadway's best were given top honors last night at a glittering ceremony that featured a spider woman, a pinball wizard, and a gay lawyer. Our Dennis Cunningham has highlights from the Great White Way. The 47th annual Tony Awards began in the by now traditional manner by rounding up the usual glittering suspects. This is the most exciting thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful night. Inside Broadway's Gershwin Theater, however, the actual Tony Awards ceremony was all business. Of course, that business is show business. But Tony's show business, considering what it means in money and prestige, is ultimately serious business. Which is why the musical battle this year between Tommy, 11 nominations, and Kiss of the Spider Woman, also 11 nominations, was an especially intense one, not at all helped by the award early on for best musical score. It's a tie. Kiss of the Spider Woman, the musical. Music, John Kander, lyrics, Fred Ebb, and the Who's Tommy. Music. Reactions to that tie, first by the woman who announced it, Tony Award winner, Diane Carroll. When I opened that and it said it's a tie, I remember that feeling for myself because I had to split the award. And I, my heart sank, but I was also happy for the other person. Then by Pete Townsend, the man who years ago wrote that score. If Tommy had squeezed by without, without this particular award for the music. I think we would then have felt that maybe that Broadway itself was uncomfortable with our presence. And uh, that would be sad. So I'm really happy about it, in fact. And finally, an interested bystander who only wants the best for Broadway. It means everybody's going to have to see both shows. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the best play category, Tony Kushner's Angels in America was a very heavy favorite to sweep just about everything. And it did, including best play of the season. Angels of America is an extraordinary, it really is, it really is a play of healing of the heart. And, it, and it's, uh, it's, it's letting us know that, uh, that regardless of what dynamic may be going on, especially the incredible dynamic of AIDS, that it really, that it really requires an intelligent heart. And finally, back to the battle of the two mighty musicals, the winner for best musical of the season, Kiss of the Spider Woman. Each year, the Broadway season is by some mourned and lamented. Each Tony night, however, tells us something otherwise. To conclude, appropriately, five-time Tony winner, Julie Harris. I, I think the soul of the theater, the, the artistic soul, is very much alive. Thank you, Ms. Harris. The person talking after Angels in America was its director, George C. Wolfe. And finally, a quick season end summary. In the play division, four Tonys, two Angels in America, including Best Play of the Year. In the musical division, a substantial two-way battle there. Five Tony Awards to Tommy and seven Tonys to Kiss of the Spider Woman, including Best Musical of the Year, Kiss of the Spider Woman. Were you surprised that uh, Kiss of the Spider Woman won the Best Musical over Tommy? Uh, I think won. I was a little bit surprised, except when I, the more I think about it, the more I think, you know, that uh, Kiss of the Spider Woman is actually the more challenging avant-garde right. musical, mm. more than, I, mean, I think a lot of people thought, well, Tommy is wonderful, and it is, but, but it's, it's 25 been, years yeah. old, mm -hmm. you know, and I think mm -hmm. that may be why. But I was. Uh, no, excuse me for That's interrupting. That's right. Of course, a little bit surprised. Theatricality of the night. Now, how did you rate this? I thought did the Tony like Award ceremony itself really moved very, this very quickly, one. and I think because they really limited people to how many how, how thank yous they, they could give in, <laughs> even if they had to shove what them off the stage. What was that? They were chironing. They had the names they, of the uh, other ahead people. of time. They announced who to thank. That on saved a little time. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. There's always a few stragglers, but what are you going to do? Thank you, Dennis.
Well, for the British, it's almost as bad as the London Bridge falling down. A beloved Victorian hotel is crumbling into the sea. Holbeck Hall was built as a mansion in 1880, and it was once owned by actor Charles Lawton, but now it's falling away bit by bit in landslides caused by heavy rains. The owners weren't even able to salvage antiques because of the danger of the collapse. Well, when we come right back from a break, women and headaches, how you can attend a free meeting on this painful subject. We have a phone number to help you out that's coming right up. You'll have to take notes. <laughs> but first, a trial gets underway for the Florida men accused of setting a tourist from our area on fire. Would you like to refinance your first mortgage or pay off a high rate second mortgage or maybe purchase a new home but you've been late with payments from time to time? Don't worry. Call 1-800-DIAL-CASH. Statewide Capital has the... They're your Simya, your Familia, your Jaren, whatever the language, they're your family. As part of the iPlan from AT&T, your whole family can hear from you for 15% less. Because you save 15% off every international call, every hour of every day to everyone, in the one country of your choice with no monthly fee. It's easy, call now. International savings, just another part of the iPlan. Jury selection is set to begin today in the trial of two Florida men accused of setting fire to a black tourist from Brooklyn. 32-year-old Christopher Wilson says that three men abducted him on New Year's Day at a suburban shopping center outside of Tampa, Florida. Those men allegedly took him to a remote area, doused him with gasoline, and then set him on fire. Two of the suspects will stand trial. The third pleaded guilty and will testify now for the prosecution. In our noon health watch for this Monday, do you suffer from headaches? It's something millions of people have to deal with. In fact, 45 million Americans feel the pain. And this is National Headache Awareness Week. Frank Field now has some news of a free headache symposium aimed at women and headaches. Frank. And it's right here in town. So to learn more about the role of hormones, stress, and diet on headaches, the National Headache Foundation is holding a free seminar this evening at Rockefeller University. Now, in order for you to attend this headache symposium, you must register by calling the number you see on the screen. It's 1-800-843-2256. Headache specialists will answer all of your many questions. The symposium will be held between 6 and 9 this evening, and there is limited seating, so I would advise you to call early, and by calling that number anytime, you can also request free literature on headaches and also on their treatment. Carol. All right, getting the number. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> well, when Luke and Laura get back together on General Hospital, they'll have some surprising new company. Meredith Berlin is just back from having her third three for three baby, <laughs> and she joins us now with all the details from Soap Opera Digest. Welcome back. Thank now. you very much. Nice to see this you is, too. Uh, I tell you, four weeks ago tomorrow, this baby is born. That's right. Top I'm in the baby business. business. <laughs> okay. Viewers of the Daytime Emmy Awards, of course, know that Jeannie Francis and Tony Geary are returning to General Hospital's Luke and Laura, but what they might not know is another major star is coming onto the show. Mary Beth Evans, last seen as the very popular Kayla on Days of Our Lives, will join General Hospital as Katherine Crawford. Her first air date is June 22nd. She is a very good friend of the late Dominique's. Now, we reported a few weeks ago that Clint Ritchie, who plays Clint Buchanan on One Life to Live, had been run over by a tractor on his California ranch. We're happy to say that Clint is out of the hospital. He has sustained multiple injuries, including a, a collapsed lung and, and broken ribs. He will be off the show for some time. No word yet when he'll be returning, but the, but the producers promise his role will be kept open for him. If it's June, it must mean weddings, lots of weddings on the soap. On All My Children, look for Erica to have wedding number six, this time to Dimitri. The date is June 22nd. We understand her dress, which is being kept under wraps, is spectacular. On Guiding Light, Mallet and Harley go off for a cruise on June 18th with matrimonial intentions. And today is the day on As the World Turns when Royce proposes to Emily, but we understand the event is going to be marred by something very shocking. And finally, in other All My Children news, the character of Travis will be coming back for a few episodes. 
in early July. Yes, that's Terry Lester, but he was on As the World Turns. He will not, the character of Travis is going to be played this time by Daniel Hugh Kelly, last seen on Hardcastle and McCormick. And also Candace Early will be coming back to the show as Donna Tyler, but only for a few episodes, and we understand it's not going to be for a happy occasion. All these comebacks, huh? It's comebacks, yes, it's a big summer of comebacks. On another planet, but what, what started the Luke and Laura reunion? Who's well, idea? Tony Geary has been on General Hospital playing a character named Bill Spencer, mm -hmm. and I think that they've been in negotiation with Jeannie Francis for some time to come back as well. So she's coming back in October, and we can see this Bill Spencer character go away, and Tony Geary reprise his role as Luke. Oh. Next week, you'll have to bring baby pictures. I will bring baby <laughs> pictures. <laughs> next that up right after. So Thank you. Great to see you, Thank Meredith. you. We're coming right back after a break with an update of our top stories, including the judge's decision this morning in the Woody Allen Mia Farrow custody battle. And also coming up, Frank Field says the heat is on, on the way, that is. Stay tuned. Really time to. Quality time for us is reading wonderful stories together. For the experience of a lifetime, make time to read with your children. I was just a little kid, cherry Kool-Aid was my friend. But then I tried more flavors and fell in love with them. I trust that Kool-Aid flavor that's in each and every glass. Of all the other mixes, I love the taste that Kool-Aid has. You'll always be my Kool-Aid. You'll always be my ace. You'll always be my first choice. I love your smiling face. I'm Roseanne Coletti with a reminder. The Troubleshooter Hotline is open weekdays from 11 a.m. till 1. So if you've got trouble, call our volunteers from the National Council of Jewish Women at 212-582-0220. And don't miss my Troubleshooter reports weekdays at 5 on Channel 2 News. A picture. A gesture. A rhyme. A turn. Express, relate, and learn. Art for every kid. New Jersey 101.5 FM Radio. New Jersey 101.5? That's my FM radio station. It's not easy to trust the politicians. New Jersey 101.5 tells the truth about our state's government. And finally, I get to talk on the radio about my taxes, my kids' school, my job, my life in New Jersey. Finally, our own radio station, New Jersey 101.5. Shame on you conveys a sense of, hey, you did wrong. Are you a crook? You ought to stop it. You should never have done it. Shame on you. Time now to update you on our top stories this Monday noon. Chinese immigrants who survived a deadly ocean voyage to New York were sent to Pennsylvania today, where they will be detained pending immigration hearings. The captain and the crew of that ship that ran aground off of Queens are to be arraigned today on charges related to illegal smuggling. And a judge ended the Woody Allen Mia Farrow child custody fight today. Farrow gets custody of the three kids. Allen gets limited visitation with two of them, but can see his eldest adopted son Moses only if the boy agrees. Farrow's attorney was scheduled a news conference for later this afternoon, so we'll have much more for you coming up on Channel 2 News at 5 o'clock. And here's Frank again. The weekend was a washout. I well, I wasn't around. Say. So I, I, I know. Don't blame him. Yeah, don't yeah blame you can't Frank. blame me. I, I was in Austin, Texas. Boy, was, talk about, about heat hot, and huh? humidity. Ooh. Some of that's going to get up here. Tell us more. All right. Listen <laughs> to this. Right now in the Midtown area, it's 70 degrees, so uh, we've warmed up some. The normal high temperature is in the upper 70s, and uh, we might get close to it today. The humidity is 49%. Uh, there's a ridge of high pressure that's building down, and that's keeping us in the clear. But warm air will start pouring right back up again tomorrow. And uh, looking at the maps themselves, you can see where they're coming from. We have warm air here. This is very warm. In fact, there's a little area of uh, cloudiness in the storm system here that's pulling moisture right out of the Gulf. And the warm front itself, all this warm air you see here, will ride in over the cooler air that's sitting on top of us now, and that will produce considerable cloudiness tomorrow. And you can literally see the moisture as it sweeps up and around the storm system that's heading up into the Great Lakes, and then the clouds will start to move in. So we expect to get into some more clouds, 
And today, a mixture of sunshine and clouds, not bad at all. Temperatures today will reach up into the upper 70s. Tonight, uh, we'll call it partly cloudy, and uh, temperatures will remain around 63 here in town. And then for tomorrow, considerable cloudiness. And as the warm air tries to push in, and uh, they will get in here by Wednesday, you can see we'll be getting well up into the 80s. So a touch of summer during the midweek period. But along with that, maybe a few scattered showers, too. Okay, thanks, Frank. And that's Channel 2 News at Noon this Monday. I'm Carol Martin. And I'm Lisa Rudolph. Have a great day.